Hello everyone, my name is Raymond Liu and I'm a fifth year medical student here at Stanford University. I'm excited to present to you today a research project on climate conditions and surgical site infections that I have been working on with Michelle Early and Dr. Joseph Forrester for the past year and a half. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers of Holman Day for the opportunity to present our work today and to Dr. Forrester for his mentorship and constant advocacy during this research project. To start, I will go over some epidemiology regarding surgical site infections. They are one of the most common hospital acquired infections in the United States, with an estimated 130 to 150,000 infections per year. Patients who develop surgical site infections are twice as likely to die and on average stay 10 days longer in the hospital. Currently, research and prevention strategies around surgical site infections focus predominantly on perioperative and patient characteristics. While there is well-documented evidence that climate affects other infection types, such as vector-borne diseases and soft tissue infections, the effect of climate variables such as temperature, humidity, and precipitation on surgical site infections are less well understood. Therefore, we conducted a retrospective cohort study to evaluate the effects of temperature, humidity, and precipitation on surgical site infection rates in the continental United States across a wide range of surgical procedures. Um, for our methods, records of surgical encounters and follow-ups within National Healthcare Safety Network designated surveillance windows of either 30 or 90 days were extracted from Market Scan. Now, Market Scan is a large commercial insurance data set with both Medicare and employer-sponsored insurance records, and the time interval from which these records were extracted from was from 2007 to 2014. Weather data was extracted from the gridded surface meteorological data set and included daily minimum temperature, daily specific humidity, and daily maximum precipitation for the surveillance window of each surgical procedure within the metropolitan statistical area where the procedure occurred. Analysis was conducted using a multivariable multinomial model with outcomes being no surgical site infection during follow-up, surgical site infection during surgical admission, and surgical site infection diagnosed during follow-up. Independent variables in the model are patient sex, their Medicare status, whether or not the procedure was inpatient or outpatient, Charleston uh, comorbidity index, length of stay, year of procedure, procedure type, and metrop metropolitan statistical area wherein the procedure occurred, as well as the aforementioned weather variables of temperature, specific humidity, and precipitation. Also, p-values were adjusted using the Holmes method. In total, 7,702,846 surgical patient encounters were extracted representing 393 metropolitan statistical areas across the United States. For surgical site infections that occurred during admission, only daily minimum temperature was significant, with every 10 degrees Celsius above zero resulting in a 1.04 odds increase in surgical site infection risk. For surgical site infection that happened after discharge, Every 10 centimeter increase of maximum daily precipitation resulted in a 1.09 odds increase in surgical site infection risk, whereas every gram kilogram unit of specific humidity resulted in a 1.03 odds increase in surgical site infection risk. Minimum temperature in this case was negatively correlated with surgical site infection rates after discharge. However, when running an identical model with specific humidity omitted, minimum daily temperature was then positively correlated with surgical site infection after discharge, with every 10 degrees Celsius increase resulting in a similar 1.04 odds increase in surgical site infection risk. Now, for the cause of this inversion of minimum temperature between models with or without specific humidity, this is likely due to their collinearity. Uh, while the specifics of the mathematical relationship between specific humidity and temperature are beyond this presentation, in brief, at 100% relative humidity, every one to two degree increase in temperature results in a one gram per kilogram increase in specific humidity. Uh, so relatively a one to, uh, one to two ratio increase. As the effect size of spe uh, specific humidity on surgical site infection is roughly six times greater than that to a one degree Celsius increase in minimum temperature, the overall effect of temperature on surgical site development is positive for relatively high relative humidity. In conclusion, surgical, for surgical site infection during surgical admission, only minimum daily temperature was found to be a significant predictor of surgical site infection. 
However, for surgical site infection during surgery, uh, surgical discharge, uh, post discharge, daily maximum precipitation, daily maximum specific humidity, and daily minimum temperature were all found to be significant predictors. The inversion of minimum temperature coefficients between models with and without specific humidity is likely a result of the collinearity that exists between the two. Um, and the overall effective temperature is positive in high humidity situations. Uh, it's an important uh, detail to note to distinguish areas such as the American Southeast, which are generally high humidity areas, to the American Southwest, and trying to predict the effect of increasing temperature on surgical site infection risk. Um, for future consideration to help develop further prevention strategies and identify other at-risk groups, uh, further investigations into the future into the mechanisms of climate-related surgical site infection, the lead lag time between weather conditions and the development of surgical site infections, and inclusion of more vulnerable groups, both domestically and abroad, are warranted. Thank you very much for your time and your interest in our presentation. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is at the bottom left of the poster. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the conference. Thank you.